This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Essays or Councils, Civil and Moral, of Francis Lord Verulam, Viscount St. Albans. To the Right Honorable, my very good Lord, the Duke of Buckingham, His Grace, Lord High Admiral of England. Excellent Lord, Solomon says, A good name is as a precious ointment, and I assure myself, such will your grace's name be with posterity. For your fortune and merit both have been imminent, and you have planted things that are like to last. I do now publish my essays, which, of all my other works, have been most current, for that, as it seems, they come home to men's business and bosoms. I have enlarged them both in number and weight, so that they are indeed a new work. I thought it therefore agreeable to my affection and obligation to your grace to prefix your name before them both in English and in Latin, for I do conceive that the Latin volume of them, being in the universal language, may last as long as books last. My instauration I dedicated to the king. My history of Henry the Seventh, which I have now also translated into Latin, and my portions of natural history to the prince. And these I dedicate to your grace, being of the best fruits, that by the good increase which God gives to my pen and labors, I could yield. God lead your grace by the hand. Your grace's most obliged and faithful servant, the Count St. Alban. Essay One, Of Truth What is truth? said jesting Pilate, and would not stay for an answer. Certainly there be that delight in giddiness, and count it a bondage to fix a belief, affecting free will in thinking as well as in acting. And though the sects of philosophers of that kind be gone, yet there remain certain discoursing wits, which are of the same veins, though there be not so much blood in them, as was in those of the ancients. But it is not only the difficulty and labor which men take in finding out of truth, nor again, that when it is found, it imposeth upon men's thoughts, that doth bring lies in favor, but a natural, though corrupt, love of the lie itself. One of the later school of Grecians examineth the matter, and is at a stand to think what should be in it that men should love lies, where neither they make it for pleasure, as with poets, nor for advantage as with the merchant, but for the lie's sake. But I cannot tell. This same truth is a naked and open daylight, that doth not show the masks and mummeries and triumphs of the world half so stately and daintily as candlelights. Truth may, perhaps, come to the price of a pearl that showeth best by day, but it will not rise to the price of a diamond or carbuncle that showeth best in varied lights. A mixture of a lie doth ever add pleasure. Doth any man doubt that if there were taken out of men's minds vain opinions, flattering hopes, false valuations, imaginations as one would, and the like, but it would leave the minds of a number of men, poor, shrunken things, full of melancholy and indisposition, and unpleasing to themselves? One of the fathers, in great severity, called Posey Venum Daemonum, because it fireth the imagination, and yet it is but the shadow of a lie. But it is not the lie that passeth through the mind, but the lie that sinketh in and settleth in that doth the hurt, such as we spake of before. But howsoever these things are thus in men's depraved judgments and affections, yet truth, which only doth judge itself, teacheth that the inquiry of truth, which is the love-making or wooing of it, the knowledge of truth, which is the presence of it, and the belief of truth, which is the enjoying of it, is the sovereign good of human nature. The first creature of God in the works of the days was the light of sense, the last was the light of reason. His Sabbath work ever since is the illumination of his spirit. First he breathed light upon the face of the matter or chaos, then he breathed light into the face of man and still he breatheth and inspireth light into the face of his chosen. 
the poet that beautified the sect that was otherwise inferior to the rest saith yet excellently well it is a pleasure to stand upon the shore and to see ships tossed upon the sea a pleasure to stand in the window of a castle and to see a battle and the adventures thereof below but no pleasure is comparable to the standing upon the vantage ground of a hill a hill not to be commanded and where the air is always clear and serene and to see the errors and wanderings and mists and tempests in the vale below so always that this prospect be with pity and not with swelling or pride certainly it is heaven upon earth to have a man's mind move in charity rest in providence and turn upon the poles of truth to pass from theological and philosophical truth to the truth of civil business it will be acknowledged even by those that practice it not that clear and round dealing is the honor of man's nature and that mixture of falsehoods is like alloy and coin of gold and silver which may make the metal work the better but it embaseth it for these winding and crooked courses are the goings of the serpent which goeth basely upon the belly and not upon the feet there is no vice that doth so cover a man with shame as to be found false and perfidious and therefore montaigne saith prettily when he inquired the reason why the word of the lie should be such a disgrace and such an odious charge saith he if it be well weighed to say that a man lieth is as much to say as that he is brave towards god and a coward towards men for a lie faces god and shrinks from man surely the wickedness of falsehood and breach of faith cannot possibly be so highly expressed as in that it shall be the last peal to call the judgments of god upon the generations of men it being foretold that when christ cometh he shall not find faith upon the earth essay two of death men fear death as children fear to go in the dark and as that natural fear in children is increased with tales so is the other certainly the contemplation of death as the wages of sin and the passage to another world is holy and religious but the fear of it as a tribute due unto nature is weak yet in religious meditations there is sometimes mixture of vanity and of superstition you shall read in some of the friars books of mortification that a man should think with himself what the pain is if he have but his fingers in pressed or tortured and thereby imagine what the pains of death are when the whole body is corrupted and dissolved when many times death passeth with less pain than the torture of a limb for the most vital parts are not the quickest of sense and by him that spake only as a philosopher and natural man it is well said pompa mortis magis terret quam mors ipsa groans and convulsions and a discolored face and friends weeping and blacks and obsequies and the like show death terrible it is worthy the observing that there is no passion in the mind of man so weak but it mates and masters the fear of death and therefore death is no such terrible enemy when a man hath so many attendants about him that can win the combat of him revenge triumphs over death love slights it honor aspireth to it grief flieth to it fear preoccupateth it nay we read after otho the emperor had slain himself pity which is the tenderest of affections provoked many to die out of mere compassion to their sovereign and as the truest sort of followers nay seneca adds niceness and satiety cogita quam diu iedem feceris mori vele non tantum fortis aut miser said iteum fastidiosus potest a man would die though he were neither valiant nor miserable only upon a weariness to do the same thing so oft over and over it is no less worthy to observe how little alteration in good spirits the approaches of death make for they appear to be the same men till the last instant augustus caesar died in a compliment livia conjugi nostri memor vive et vel tiberius in dissimulation 
as Tacitus saith of him, Jam Tiberium virus et corpus, non dissimulatio deserebent. Vespian, in a jest, sitting upon the stool, ut puto deus fio. Galba with a sentence, Ferry si ex uri sit populi Romani, holding forth his neck. Septimius Severus in dispatch. Adeste si quid mihi aristat agendum, and the like. Certainly the Stoics bestowed too much cost upon death, and by their great preparations may it appear more fearful. Better, saith he, qui finum vitei extremum inter munera ponet naturae. It is as natural to die as to be born, and to a little infant perhaps the one is as painful as the other. He that dies in an earnest pursuit is like one that is wounded in hot blood, who, for the time, scarce feels the hurt, and therefore a mind fixed and bent upon somewhat that is good doth avert the dolors of death. But above all, believe it, the sweetest canticle is, Nunc dimittis, when a man hath obtained worthy ends and expectations. Death hath this also, that it openeth the gate to good fame, and extinguisheth envy. Extinctus amabitur idem. Essay 3. Of Unity in Religion. Religion being the chief band of human society, it is a happy thing when itself is well contained within the true band of unity. The quarrels and divisions about religion were evils unknown to the heathen. The reason was, because the religion of the heathen consisted rather in rites and ceremonies than in any constant belief. For you may imagine what kind of faith theirs was when the chief doctors and fathers of their church were the poets. But the true God hath this attribute, that he is a jealous God, and therefore his worship and religion will endure no mixture nor partner. We shall therefore speak a few words concerning the unity of the church, what are the fruits thereof, what the bounds, and what the means. The fruits of unity, next unto the well-pleasing of God, which is all in all, are two the one towards those that are without the church, the other towards those that are within. For the former it is certain that heresies and schisms are of all others the greatest scandals, yea, more than corruption of manners. For as in the natural body, a wound or solution of continuity is worse than a corrupt humor, so in the spiritual. So that nothing doth so much keep men out of the church and drive men out of the church as a breach of unity. And therefore, whensoever it cometh to pass that one saith, Ecce in deserto, another saith, Ecce in penetralibus, that is, when some men seek Christ in the conventicles of heretics, and others in an outward face of the church, that voice had need continually to sound in men's ears, Nolite exadere, go not out. The doctor of the Gentiles, the propriety of whose vocation drew him to have a special care of those without, saith, If an heathen come in, and hear you speak with t several tongues, will he not say that you are mad? And certainly it is little better when atheists and profane persons do hear of so many discordant and contrary opinions in religion. It doth avert them from the church, and maketh them to sit down in the chair of the scorners. It is but a light thing to be vouched in so serious a matter, but yet it expresseth well the deformity. There is a master of scoffing that in his catalogue of books of a feigned library sets down this title of a book, The Morris Dance of Heretics. For indeed, every sect of them hath a diverse posture, or cringe by themselves, which cannot but move derision in worldlings and depraved politics, who are apt to condemn holy things. As for the fruit towards those that are within, it is peace, which containeth infinite blessings. It establisheth faith, it kindleth charity. The outward peace of the church distilleth into peace of conscience, and it turneth the labors of writing and reading of controversies into treaties of mortification and devotion. 
Concerning the bounds of unity, the true placing of them importeth exceedingly. There appear to be two extremes. For to certain zealants all speech of pacification is odious. Is it peace, Jehu? What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. Peace is not the matter, but following and party. Contrarywise, certain Laodiceans and lukewarm persons think they may accommodate points of religion by middle way, and taking part of both and witty reconcilements, as if they would make an arbitrament between God and man. Both these extremes are to be avoided, which will be done if the League of Christians, penned by our Saviour himself, were in two clauses thereof, soundly and plainly expounded. He that is not with us is against us, and again, he that is not against us is with us. That is, if the points of fundamental and of substance in religion were truly discerned and distinguished from points not merely of faith, but of opinion, order, or good intention. This is a thing may seem to many a matter trivial, and done already, but if it were done less partially, it would be embraced more generally. Of this I may give only this advice, according to my small model. Men ought to take heed of rending God's church by two kinds of controversies. The one is, when the matter of the point controverted is too small and light, not worth the heat and strife about it, kindled only by contradiction. For as it is noted, by one of the fathers, Christ coat indeed had no seam, but the church's vesture was of diverse colors. Whereupon he saith, In veste varietis sit, cisura non sit. They be two things, unity and uniformity. The other is, when the matter of the point controverted is great, but it is driven to an over-great subtlety and obscurity, so that it becometh a thing rather ingenious than substantial. A man that is of judgment and understanding shall sometimes hear ignorant men differ, and know well within himself that those which so differ mean one thing, and yet they themselves would never agree. And if it come so to pass in that distance of judgment which is between man and man, shall we not think that God above that knows the heart doth not discern that frail men, in some of their contradictions, intend the same thing, and accepteth of both? The nature of such controversies is excellently expressed by St. Paul in the warning and precept that he giveth concerning the same, De vita profanus vocum novitates et oppositionis falsi nominis scientia. Men create oppositions which are not, and put them into new terms, so fixed as whereas the meaning ought to govern the term, the term in effect governeth the meaning. There be also two false pieces or unities, the one when the peace is grounded but upon an implicit ignorance, for all colors will agree in the dark, the other when it is pieced up upon a direct admission of contraries in fundamental points. For truth and falsehood in such things are like the iron and clay in the toes of Nebuchadnezzar's image. They may cleave, but they will not incorporate. Concerning the means of procuring unity, men must be aware that in the procuring or reuniting of religious unity, they do not dissolve and deface the laws of charity and of human society. There be two swords amongst Christians, the spiritual and temporal, and both have their due office and place in the maintenance of religion. But we may not take up the third sword, which is Mahomet's sword, or like unto it, that is, to propagate religion by wars, or by sanguinary persecutions to force consciences. Except it be in cases of overt scandal, blasphemy, or intermixture of practice against the state, much less to nourish seditions, to authorize conspiracies and rebellions, to put the sword into the people's hands, and the like, tending to the subversion of all government, which is the ordinance of God. For this is but to dash the first table against the second, and so to consider men as Christians, as we forget that they are men. Lucretius the poet, when he beheld the act of Agamemnon, that could endure the sacrificing of his own daughter, exclaimed, Tantum religio potuit suadere malorum. 
what would he have said if he had known of the massacre in france or the powder treason of england he would have been seven times more epicure and atheist than he was for as the temporal sword is to be drawn with great circumspection in cases of religion so it is a thing monstrous to put it into the hands of the common people let that be left unto the anabaptist and other furies it was great blasphemy when the devil said i will ascend and be like the highest but it is greater blasphemy to personate god and bring him in saying i will descend and be like the prince of darkness and what is it better to make the cause of religion to descend to the cruel and execrable actions of murdering princes butchering of people and subversion of states and governments surely this is to bring down the holy ghost instead of the likeness of a dove in the shape of a vulture or raven and set out of the bark of a christian church a flag of a bark of pirates and assassins therefore it is most necessary that the church by doctrine and decree princes by their swords and all learnings both christian and moral as by their mercury rod do damn and send to hell for ever those facts and opinions tending to the support of the same as hath been already in good part done surely in councils concerning religion that council of the apostle would be prefixed era hominis non implet justitium dei and it was a notable observation of a wise father and no less ingeniously confessed that those which held and persuaded pressure of consciences were commonly interested therein themselves for their own ends 